In this presentation, we're finally to the point we've all been waiting for, the population of the form W-2. This is a copy of a W-2 from the IRS website at irs.gov. It's just an example form to show us what uh, the form will look like. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. We'll then use a mock form in Excel to pick up our information. Note that the W-2 form is one that we've all probably received. The W-2 form telling us how much we have earned and the withholdings that we then use in order to report our responsibility, our taxes, and related withholdings on our Form 1040. It's also important to note that the W-2, once we get it, we should automatically think and know that when we receive a W-2, that the another copy has been sent to the government so the government has a copy of the w-2 so we're voluntarily required to report this information on the form 1040 however they're already aware of it on uh the on the irs side as well so if we do not report our information from the w-2 properly then uh, we'll almost surely get noticed on it uh, we'll get a notification saying that there's an error because it has been reported. In other words, we as the employer are going to send a copy to our employees as well as a copy to the government. As we can see, this form consists of uh, the employer identification number, the EIN number that uh, we're gonna have to report. Again, that's the employer special number for reporting payroll taxes. Then the employer's name and address, a control number, the employee's first name, last name, uh, employees zip code so all the uh, data information in order to know who we're talking about here and then we'll get into the boxes which can be more confusing than we may think when we first look at this meaning if we were to look at uh, a w-2 and say how much does someone earn most people would probably look at box one but box one is probably the most deceiving to look at because uh, box one is related to the federal income tax and it could be reduced by things like a cafeteria plan or a retirement plan. So it could be significantly less than actual earnings, in other words, because earnings are, you know, retirement plan and cafeteria plan, things like that are still significant. They represent earnings, they represent compensation, and they're not included in the wages in box one. So this, this represents wages related to calculating our um, 1040 federal income tax. Box two is, of course, the withholdings for the federal income tax. Box three also represents wages, but may differ from box one because it has different uh, deductions would be involved. In other words, the 401k or a retirement plan may not be included as a deduction from Social Security wages, whereas it would for uh, the wages in federal income tax. And they may have hit the cap here which will change from year to year, which means that this is not a reliable number either, especially as to how much someone actually earns, especially if they're a high earner, because it's gonna be capped. That'll be used to calculate the social security tax. So here's the social security tax in box four. Medicare wages, probably the highest wages, probably the, of the three, the highest, um, most accurate box to look at for total wages. It still may not represent total compensation because of deductions um, from gross wages for Medicare, which could include something like a cafeteria plan. Uh, and we could find that would be reported in box 12B, uh, in, in somewhere in, in box 12 and have a, an indication, which I believe would be a DD, which would show us what that uh, Medicare or what the insurance would be. And then we have the Medicare tax, tax withheld here. Uh, Social Security tips, allocated tips, uh, verification code, dependent care benefits, and then uh, not qualified plans. And um, then we've got the box 12, 
which we're going to report amongst other things, but we're going to report uh, here. What will often be reported here is if there's a retirement plan and if there's some kind of uh, cafeteria or insurance plan here as well. Uh, then we have these, these items which are showing whether there is a retirement plan. So we have to select uh, whether there is or not. Other, and then the state information down here, state identification number, state wages, state income tax, local taxes, and the state withholdings. If we move to the form W-3, so the W-3 form is going to be very similar to the W-2 form in that it, it'll, in essence, just, it will just basically summarize the data. So if we were to, in other words, add up all the W-2 forms for box one, then that should add up in sum two, box one on the W-3. So you can think of the W-3 as sort of like a W-2 as if all employees were combined into one individual. It's going to be the reconciling form or the summing up form of all W-2s. So you got box one wages, box two social security wages, box three Medicare wages, which should add up to the sum of all W-2, box one, box two, and three respectively. Same as box two, federal income tax withheld, box four, social security tax withheld, and box six, Medicare. So let's, we're going to look at a, kind of a mock of this form here so that we can fill this out. So we got a similar kind of form. We're going to fill out the blue area here. And uh, we've tried to give a, uh, you know, close representation of the, of these boxes here. Okay. So we're going to start with the W-2 information and we're just going to try to fill this stuff out as we would from our register. Obviously, it'd be very nice in a, in a system where this would happen automatically or auto um, from a computer system, but we're going to pick this up. So we're going to go through the earnings records for each employee. So if we go back to the register and I'm scrolling up to the top, we've frozen the panes. I still froze the panes up here. That's going to be on cell M4. M4, then go to the view tab, windows group, frozen panes and freeze the panes. And then we're going to scroll to the right to the earnings records. So here's the earnings records. This is the information per employee. And that's, of course, what we need when we're working with um, the payroll. So we'll start with Anthony here. So Anthony is our first employee and we'll just pick this information up. So first, we're starting with the, the uh, wages and compensation. I'm going to say that's going to be equal to and then go back to our register for Anthony. Now, uh, you would think it'd be total earnings, but remember, we're going to subtract from that the um, 401k, any retirement plan. If, it, if, the cafeter if this was a uh, cafeteria plan, then it would be subtracted too. We're saying it's not here. So this is not going to be a reduction uh, from gross wages. So it's just the 401k. So there we have that. And then the federal withholdings, the FIT, so I'm in I, uh, I5 equals, we'll go back to our earnings and we're going to pick up the FIT, this is the 921, and enter. And then we'll go to the social security wages, which equals, we're going to go back to our register and we've got the social security wages. It's the same as the total earnings. It would only, it would differ if they hit the cap or if there's some deduction for social security, which would include a cafeteria plan, uh, which this is, we're saying again, that's not. So it's gonna be the 20, note that they're gonna be different. Social security tax withheld, we're gonna say equals, and go back to our form, our, uh, our records and earnings records. <laughs> and we're looking for the social security withheld, which is this item, and enter. And then Medicare wages equals back to our records. Now we're going to say it's the total. It would only differ if there was something deductible from Medicare, which would be uh, something like a cafeteria plan. So we don't have anything. So we're just going to pick that it's just going to be equal to the total earnings. Then we have the Medicare tax withheld. So we're just going to say that that equals and go back to our register. We're looking for HI. So that's Medicare, HI, hospital insurance. And then we got that. So that's going to be the major components here. So notes that the most accurate number is typically the Medicare, 
this one's going to be accurate here in terms of total wages earned. And uh, wage compensation here is actually the, the least accurate because it's it could be reduced significantly depending on someone took advantage of something like a retirement plan, which we highly recommend doing if you have the opportunity to do so. Okay, so then we're going to go down to uh, box 12A. And box 12A is where we're going to put that uh, retirement plan. So within box 12A, we're going to say equals and go back to the register. And we're going to pick up that uh 1115 and that's the retirement plan so of course if you look at a w-2 then typically the difference between say the medicare 2812.5 and box one 19796.85 is represented down here and if you look up the symbol d typically will be um for some type of retirement plan now, if, if this was a cafeteria plan, then um, we would have the cafeteria plan with the DD. So we're not, or, or if there's an employer sponsor plan, it would be here. Uh, we're not gonna have that here because uh, we're saying that that's included in the wages up in uh, line five. But just note that if you had uh, something like a DD down here, that would mean that uh, you had something like a cafeteria plan and then this number really wouldn't even represent of the three numbers this being the highest number the most representative of income would still be low too low in order to get to the actual income by the amount of um, cafeteria plan that would be then reported on 12b in line 13 usually there's going to be different types of you know three boxes here i'm just going to say the retirement plan and put an x to say that we have the retirement plan here that's basically gonna be it here. So I've got the uh, employee's name and we're gonna leave it at that. We just wanna go through these numbers broadly and see how this thing will tie out to then the W-3. So if we scroll back down, we're gonna take a look at the next W-2. We got four of these to fill out. So the next W-2 is going to be here and we're looking for Cindy Lewis. So if we go back to our register, I'm just gonna scroll down. So if I go to the, to the left a little bit, I'm going to scroll down just so we can see Cindy's data. So there's that. And then go back to our W-2. Okay, so we're just going to do the same thing. In box one, we've got the wages compensation equals back to our register. It's going to be the uh, total earnings. I'm going to scroll to the right. Minus, minus uh, the 401k right and not not that it would be subtracting the insurance if it was a uh, cafeteria and then we're gonna have the federal withholding equals we're gonna go back to the register and we're gonna pick up the FIT then we're gonna go to the Social Security wages equals we're gonna go back to the register and pick up the Social Security differing from or well, it could differ it's not differed now but it could based on if they hit the cap or if there's a cafeteria or some other uh, reduction for Social Security, those being the main ones. And then Social Security taxes withheld equals back to our earnings records. We're going to go to this item. And then our Medicare wages equals going back to our earnings. It's going to be equal to the total. And again, that one would only differ because there is no cap if there was some deduction for Medicare, such as a cafeteria plan. So enter. And then we're gonna to go to I-33 equals, back to our earnings records, and we're picking up Medicare HI, and enter. Okay, so that's gonna be the main components, social security tips, vacation, dependent care, non-qualified, and then we're gonna pick up the um, retirement plan equals, we're going to go back to our records and pick up the 401k. And again, if this was a cafeteria, um, then it would be here and not included in these lines as income. However, it for us is included in these lines and therefore we're not reporting it here on 12B. Okay, so then we're going to scroll down to the next employee. So, and we're going to go over to our register and do the same thing. We're going to scroll down to the next employee. Uh, and that's going to be Jill Jackson. So we're going to scroll down. Okay, I'm going to scroll to, to the right a bit so we can see the data we're going to be using most. 
and then go back to our information here. So uh, I'm going to delete this for now. Okay, we'll start with box one equals go back to our register. It's going to be the total earnings minus the 401k enter then the federal income tax equals we can go back to our register federal income tax is going to be the fit then the social security wages equals back to the register it's going to be this one still the same because there's no cap didn't hit the cap and there's no other deduction for social security and then uh whoop, i put it in the wrong area it's going to be here Social Security wages will be this item. And then Social Security in box 12, the amount that we actually withheld, it's going to be equal to the OASDI. And then we're going to go to the Medicare wages, which will equals back to the earnings record. We're going to say Medicare wages is going to be equal to the total earnings unless there was some other type of deduction from it, like a, like a cafeteria. So we're going to say no, it's going to be that. Medicare withholding equals back to our earnings. And we're going to say that that is the HI here. Enter. And then Social Security, uh, nothing here. We got a retirement plan. We should have a, a retirement plan here. And then the other thing we want is our 401k here. We're going to say this equals go back and pick up the 401k. Okay, and, and again, no cafeteria plan because um, it's included. It's not gonna be DD at least because this would mean that it would not be included in uh, one, three, and five, and ours is. All right, last employee, we're gonna scroll back down. We've got uh, the big earner, big earner down here, which is Judy Jones, so we're gonna go back Scroll down to Judy Jones. If we scroll over, we're looking Judy Jones here. We're gonna scroll back down and we're gonna go all the way to the right to the data that we are working with, uh, with total earnings here. So go back to here, box one is gonna equal back to our register. It's gonna be equal to the total earnings uh, minus the 401k and enter. And then box two is gonna equal and we're gonna go back to our register, the FIT, and enter. Then box three is gonna equal the social security wages. And this is where she has hit the limit. So that's why we have a different social security wages that she's capped out at the 128,400. So this number will be different than this number. Social security taxes equals, and we go to the social security tax, which is this number enter note in essence that's the max tax you can pay because it's maxed out at the cap and then the medicare wages for this particular problem that cap could change over time so medicare wages back to the register it's going to be the same as the total earnings because there is no cap and we don't have any other reductions for medicare and then the medicare tax equals back to the register the hi enter Okay, and that's going to be main of, the most of it. We're going to say that there is a retirement plan and we're going to pick up the 401k here in 12A equals back to the register, the 401k and enter. Okay, so now we're just going to sum this information up on the W3. So we're just going to basically pick up all box ones, box twos, box fives from our information over here. So box one equals and scroll back over this number plus this number for our next employee plus same number for our third employee plus same number for our fourth employee and there's our total wages if we want to reconcile that it should be equal to our totals if we scroll down to to our totals down here It should be equal to the 241, 206 minus the 13, 13, 871 for all employees, 227, 335. 
So here's the 227, 335. And then the federal income tax is going to be equal. And we'll go back to all the way back up. Federal, this number for our first employee, same number for our second employee, same number for our third employee. <laughs> Where's the third employee? Same number for our fourth employee. And enter. And then again, that number, 42,215. If we go back to our earnings record for all employees, 42,215 for FIT, 42,215,66. -215 and then we'll go back to our records here. Social Security, it's going to equal on the W3, it's going to equal Social Security for our first employee, wages, Social Security wages for our second employee, Social Security wages for our third employee. Social Security wages for our fourth employee and enter. If we double check that number on the W3 to our records, we're looking at this number, 194606. That should be equal to the 194606. Then the Social Security tax withheld for the W3 will equal the tax withheld for our W2 first employee for the W-2 second employee, for the W-2 third employee, for the W-2 uh, fourth employee, enter. And then that number, Social Security tax withheld, should match our earnings records for all employees, 12.65.57. Uh, Back to our W-2, 12.65.57. Medicare, last one, we're gonna scroll over. Medicare wages for the first employee plus Medicare wages for the second employee plus Medicare wages for the third employee plus Medicare wages for the fourth employee. Enter. If we double check that number, 241202 to our records for Medicare, we're going to say Medicare wages is total rate wages, 241206. 241206. Yeah, that's right. And then Taxes for Medicare equals taxes for the first employee, taxes for the second employee, taxes for the third employee for Medicare, and finally, taxes for the fourth employee. And then we can double check that Medicare taxes here, 349749, that's going to be equal to 349749 for the total. So that, in essence, is the W-2 and the W-3. You can see the W-3 is just basically summing up all of the W-2s uh, and, and providing that information. Note that when we look at these numbers, the most accurate number really is this Medicare wages, and it may not even re represent all wages that have been earned if there's something that was deducted from Medicare, such as a, a cafeteria plan. This number often is not very representative of actual earnings because the social, the uh, retirement plan is significant to reduce. And if there's a high earner, this number will not be representative of all. If someone earns, um, you know, if you have a lot of people over the cap, that'll be too low. So this number is actually probably closest. It is usually closest to actual earnings uh, for for the W two and the W three.